All right, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Danielle Saunders. I serve at Harmony Learning Center in Maplewood, Minnesota, and I'm a proud member of this group. Our central mission around this project was to build a bridge between both sides of the digital divide. Thus, we were called the Digital Bridge Makers. Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Sauer. I serve at Hired's East Side location. Welcome to my living room. So I'm going to touch on the inspiration for this project. As with everyone else, our project idea looked very different in the fall compared to when we actually had to start making content in the spring. So we were with a lot of the groups and had to transform our project. And we wanted to focus on increasing communication and bridging the digital divide for everyone. So the scope was very, very broad, um, but we wanted to help people who may feel like they're in isolation and don't have access to resources where they could learn technology. That's a really new thing, I think, for all CTEP members, teaching technology through technology. Um, and we also, so our platform we chose was Facebook because we found that that is pretty user friendly and pretty accessible to most people. A lot of people use it to communicate with family members. So it's pretty um, common in our society. And in terms of content, we're going to touch on that in a moment. But we really liked the idea of our members just being able to scroll through their Facebook feed and see content and interact if they wanted to or maybe save it for another time. Hi, um, my name is Megan and I'm serving at Metro South Adult Basic Education. Um, so like Olivia said, our goal was to create a Facebook community where people could come and learn digital literacy skills that interested them when they were available. Um, so we had a total of 38 group members, uh, mostly from Metro South, which was my site and hired Olivia's site, as well as just a handful of other community members. Um, and so we each posted to the page five times a week and each of our group members agreed to be responsible for a different day of the week to post. So we kept that consistent. Um, and then we all were responsible for creating content to teach various programming that was relevant to each week's theme. And we centered the themes mostly around North Star digital literacy tests um, and then a few creative weeks. Um, to kind of gauge the interest of a variety of different um, group members. So. Yes, um, my name is Sammy from Interfaith Outreach in Plymouth. Um, on our group post, we try to keep the <clears throat> content simple, simple language, so most people can understand. We try to be direct um, to the point of the <clears throat> chosen topic and theme um, we did simple video covers so that people can um, find the uh, videos that we post we also tried to make it light um, to engage um, the the viewers um, with humor um, we've added links um, to direct to the sites that um, had the material for the for for the members, and we also on our um, individual themes, um, we tried to introduce um, something that we were interested in and thought um, everyone else would be interested in, um, and um, I hope it. Um, I hope you liked it. Thank you. So despite the obvious outside influences that made civic engagement really difficult during this time, we are proud of the accomplishments that we have made and how these accomplishments can continue to flourish even as we move on from the program. Over the span of our project, our Facebook page gap garnered a small but dedicated following of students and learners. Although our members are few, we are proud to have interacted with this group. We didn't have an interac any interaction expectations because our goal was not to create a mass following. 
Additionally, the information that we created will always be there, even after our participation with this group is discontinued. It can expand in size and success even af after we move on as CTEP members. We believe more interaction would be possible if the page persisted. But luckily, specific students from our classes and workshops can access the resources in the future, leaving behind a convenient digital footprint for future reference. Should the direction and purpose of this group alter as time goes on, it can also be used as a hub for future classes and workshops to share information. The intention of the group may change in years to come, and this is part of the reason why we are so excited for the future. Hey everybody, I'm Antonio. Right now I'm serving at PCs for People. Um, and over the course of this whole project, um, our main stumbling blocks were kind of focused um, on those that were kind of present in any community that's like forming and starting to form. Um, the biggest thing was kind of accessibility. We wanted to make sure that everything was like equally accessible by using appropriate language. Uh, we try to use as little figurative language or decorative language as possible, because we know that a lot of our participants are English language learners. Um, another thing we had to overcome was a lack of general interaction with our page. Our solutions to this were kind of like content focused. Um, so we would, you know, introduce more relevant technology. We would invite participants to interact explicitly. Um, but we would post more videos. We would use shorter posts. Um, we would highlight any special vocabulary words that um, uh, were maybe important to the lesson. Um, and then we would also introduce ourselves. Um, we introduced ourselves at the beginning of the project. And then um, anytime we had a post, we would make sure we said who was typing this post. It wasn't just this nameless Facebook person. It was, it was Danny, it was, it was Antonio, or it was Olivia. Um, so that was so that, you know, people could feel like more, more connected with, with us as a people. Um, yeah, so the biggest opportunity that we see for this project in the future is as a learning resource to be built upon by later CTEP. Um, more like a, a permanent community of learning that only, you know, can grow. CTEP members um, that teach classes and workshops would be able to direct students to this page to find resources, discuss old concepts, and learn something new, bridging the communication and technology of social media with the students of tech literacy. All right, so in terms of what we learned about civic engagement, one thing that we all kind of realized near the end of our project was that for the most part, our group was really new to the Twin Cities and to the communities there, except for Danny, of course. So for us, it was an opportunity to work on networking and seeing what a new community could be like for us and all of the events that have gone on this year as well are changing how community can be built and holding other people accountable. Um, we believe that in the future, more networking could be done as people are getting more used to using technology on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and finally, we learned that flexibility was very important when it came to this project and that ultimately our focus was on serving people in the community and making resources available to them as well so flexibility always important and should be kept in mind in the future thank you so much do you have any questions all right i like your gif olivia thank you yeah uh, real great. As people are adding questions, I'm curious, Olivia, too, just as a member who's going to be returning for next year, like, what does this make you think about for yourself for civic engagement projects for next year? Oh, my gosh, I want to make a YouTube channel. Okay. Like, I, I know there are videos out there, and it might seem like reinventing the wheel, but I feel like some people have really tiny problems. And I can easily just like hop on my computer, make a video, and they can watch it on their screen. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for the future and have that connected to a Facebook group and Instagram maybe. So yep. much potential. Great. What other questions do we have uh, for the audience uh, for this project?
Okay, so Eric asked, with all of the controversy surrounding Facebook, like mm -hmm. privacy issues or unquestionable content, how did you encourage your users to exercise extra scrutiny? I like this question. I think it's important and I see it in my, in, at my service site as well, especially when people were coming in. I believe we covered basic computers at the beginning of our Facebook page and we talked about creating strong passwords and also if you're on a public computer, making sure that you log out. So we covered a few pieces in there, but maybe not as broadly as we should have. We also didn't get a chance to talk about this a lot, but um, we did choose to use, like each of our members posted from our Facebook page instead of our individual Facebooks, and we had each um, group member post from their Facebook page to the group. So it wasn't, so like their own personal Facebook pages were private and people didn't have to be friends or share all of their personal information in order to participate. So that was an advantage that we saw from Facebook. Uh, Lisa is asking, we've never had a project that's really been connected with Facebook uh, before. And I was curious, did you see this as more accessible for some people? Um, I think so, uh, mainly because Facebook is something that is a really well-known platform. Um, even if you don't, maybe don't have a Facebook, you know what it is, you know how to, how to use it. And um, I know that, I know I personally have family members that maybe aren't super tech literate, maybe not super, um, um, maybe not super good at like English or English skills aren't like super great, but they still have a Facebook account. Maybe their family member set it up for them or something. Um, and I feel like that's a pretty common theme among a lot of people is that they have an account, they have something set up. Um, I think that it's a great place to reach people because, you know, things just show up on their feed. They're just scrolling, there's a meme, there's a GIF, and then boom, there's technology education um, where maybe they weren't seeking it out, but um, it's definitely very helpful. Yeah, there was a focus on like covert learning of digital literacy skills. So if someone's, we, if we ask them to write a comment and they type it out, that's a skill. If we ask them to share a picture, that's another skill. So there were lots of baby steps in there. <laughs> 